G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Sporting in on the southeast side of the map. Playing as the Ottomans in the color pink. We've got Leenok. And in the northwest side of the map on the color orange. Playing also as the Ottomans. It is the one and only Wallalo God himself, Salami. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves an Ottoman mirror. Something that I don't think we've seen before ever i would almost be tempted to say uh, it's been a very long time if we've ever seen one uh since we've seen one that's for sure i can't remember the last time i, I casted an ottoman mirror so i, I uh, i'm gonna be i'm gonna call it right now i don't think i've casted an ottoman mirror before uh i'm looking forward to seeing how this goes down obviously we've got two top level players right now salami inside the top 10 i think he's sitting at about rank number five on the ladder leenok sitting at about rank 16 obviously leenok very talented. Was at the Red Bull Wallalo. Salami unfortunately didn't make it this year. Perhaps there's always next year though. Well, let's talk a little bit about these openings, about what we're seeing, because it's going to be a one scout opening from Salami over on the other side of the map. When we take a look at Leenok, he's going to be doing the same thing. Both players opening with the military school as well. So obviously if you don't open with the military school, you're going to be behind your enemy. Your enemy is going to be getting those free resources early on and you're not. So it makes plenty of sense to just be going for it, but we do see that there's plenty of villagers here still on wood for Salami at the moment. He's up to 40 wood at the moment. Checking back in, though, with Lee Nock. It's not the case for him, though. He's moving already over to gold, so we've got a little bit of a difference in the openings here, but we do see now those villagers have jumped off gold. Or rather, have ju jumped off uh, wood and are uh, moving out over to gold. So very similar openings here. Uh, when it comes to base building, uh, I do prefer uh, the, the base building of Salami. I think he's got a great little spot here as well for his Twin Minaret Madrasa. Remember when you do place your Twin Minaret Madrasa, the number one thing that you're going to be looking for is having it close to the town center. And we'll see that over on the other side here with Lee Nock. The main issue that he's going to have is that there's not a lot of space here for any subsequent military production buildings. That's what you want to do. You want to keep them all together. You want to keep them all nice and close and tug or, or snuck rather. But he didn't really have a good spot. I think his best expansion spot is, uh, is kind of like towards this direction out here. But even then, it doesn't feel that good having that kind of expansion just because you do have this uh, this this large this large uh, cliff face. Let's just call it that much. But Salami going to be on the defensive. Now, he doesn't actually know where his enemy is. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, his enemy's out over here running the backside. So I think Salami is just going to be looking to defend his gold vein. Maybe appreciates that his military school is a bit slower than his enemies. So it just says, well, you know what? We're going to take our time. We're just going to defend. That's exactly what he does. And now, spearman on spearman action ain't going to be happening. Leenok looking at that and saying, well, you know what? I don't want to lose my spear because all that happens right there is that as long as a villager gets one auto attack off on that spearman, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter because the spearman's going to be able to kill him. But we do see the Twin Minaret Madrasa going to be coming down. Salami actually changing it up a little bit, moving his Twin, twin Minaret Madrasa out on the berries. Uh, so that is going to interfere a little bit with his military school and the, the production facilities that he's got back here. But that's still a decent spot. We'll take a look over at Lee Nock. He's going to be pushing his deer towards his twin minaret madrasa. I feel like if he's going to go for this spot, he probably could have just chucked it up against the berries as well. But you've got to remember, by having the twin minaret madrasa at the front of your base like this, you are risking the potential for an archer push to come in and then to lose that, uh, that a or access to those food resources can be really important to maintain control of those. All right, well, at this point in time, Salami is going to be scouting out the enemy. He sees the spears that have come out so far. Very similar build orders here. The, the first difference that we're going to have, though, is Salami is going up with four villagers on the landmark. Only two villagers on the other side for Leenok. And Leenok quite heavily on wood, or rather on gold. He's going to be opting for, most likely, a wheelbarrow here. Whereas no double broadaxe going to be coming in, at least not with the gold that he's collecting at this point. Uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of wheelbarrow and double broadaxe. I think it makes a lot of sense to be getting it. Just because in this matchup, typically, or not in this matchup, but rather as the Ottomans, you're going to be making a lot of archers. So you want to maximize your efficiency when your villagers are out on the wood line. Under the Twin Minaret Madressa, you know, you've, you've got you've no real need for a wheelbarrow. There's a big need for a wheelbarrow out here on the wood line. Villagers now going to start moving out. What if we go... Here, two villagers moving out now, over towards the west side of the map. Is he going to wall it off? Is he going to drop down a market? What is his plan right here? And we see stone now going to be taken. So we'll be looking for that additional military school. 
on the other side of the map. No second military school just yet for Lenok, but give him a minute or two and he might change his mind. Wheelbarrow coming through straight away for him. Obviously, doesn't get the mill in the Dark Age. No real need, because the Twin Minaret Madressa acts as the mill. And a lot of villagers now moving over to stone here for, for Lenok. Which makes me think we're going to see a second town center coming out of this. Probably going to be dropping a second military school as well. But uh, it will depend. There we go. There there he goes now. Uh, so I think the question is, where does Lenok go from here? I suspect Archers is probably the right play. And he does indeed go Archers. Just because, well, you can look to try and make... You can look to try and make Spahi. But your enemy's already got Spearman out. You know that your enemy's got Spearman out. And take a look at this over on the other side of the map. We do see villagers moving out. And he's taken them two by two, which I think is quite interesting. Why two by two? It's obviously double the idle time, but it's also double the, the build time here. So just looking to establish control across the map. And already the fact that I see him walling in relics makes me think, is he going for a bit of a castle age timing here? Why would he be going to such an extent to secure up the map at this point? Unless he was thinking about going for a castle age timing. Is he maybe going for trade? Do we potentially see trade bags coming out right now? For salami that could be an option as well i've theorized about trade bags about the way that it would work for ottoman players and i think on a map like this it could it has real potential so the idea is you'd want to just establish a presence out on the map get your walls up and then begin trading behind it i suspect that's what we might actually see here F judging by the way that salami's playing this it it looks like it's going to be that way and we do see double broad axe now going to be coming through for the wall of Lord god age up or rather the uh, vizier point gonna be coming through now as well it's got a number of options uh could be looking for it's it's probably gonna be the meta yeah it is the meta now uh, we take a look on the other side of the map and anatolian hills for lenox so something less aggressive and look this is almost playing right into right into lenox or rather right into salami's trap we've seen salami be successful with trade on this map before but now we've got a second town center coming out for lenox which basically says hey i'm trying to get an economic lead here and we look back at the base. He's doing it. He's actually doing it. Salami is going to be going for trade. And not just any trade. This is Ottoman trade. Ottoman trade is actually, I will have you guys know, one of the best trades in the game. It's just because of their other playstyle that we don't really get to see it a whole lot. Their other playstyle being military school focused. But there's no reason why we can't see both. And that's exactly what Salami looks to do here. He walls up completely. And look at the look at the extent he's going to wall up here even double walling in in some parts you can see the way that he walls in this in this area he's specifically walling so that he doesn't meet any trees because if he walls to these trees and then walls across his enemy can just bring a villager or two chop through and then bring the entire army up and deny the trade and that's something that you don't want well for the moment salami gonna be just chilling out Mining his own business. Lee not going to be doing much of the same. But we do see now some barracks and archery rangers coming down. So I suspect we might potentially have some villagers. And what do we got right here? Look at this. Villager having to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, a long route through the mountains. Now, hopefully he's realized that that's a way through. And Lee not going for some defensive walls here. So looking to try and keep himself safe. So this is a, a little bit of the... Uh, something that you've always got to be worried about right because you're you're sitting on two town centers and you're thinking to yourself well i'm fine i'm in a great position right like that because the the way that we think about economy or economics in age of empires 4 is the concept of scaling you want to know okay in 10 minutes who's going to be further ahead is it going to be me is it going to be my enemy and Lenox made an assumption now well it's going to be me at, at least i'm going to be running even because i've got a second town center now of course Salami could go for a third town center. There's nothing that stops him from doing that. But Lenok is going to be working towards a timing. The problem is that Salami's timing is much more aggressive. Take a look at this. Triple, triple market coming up. Single market in the corner. He's going to be pulling in. I'm going to be guessing, judging by how close that is, 178 gold. Let's see. 176. Not too bad. 176 gold. That's a huge amount. And when Trade Bags comes in, which is the unique technology available to the Ottomans in the Vizier system, it's going to pump that up from 176 to like 250? Something ludicrous like that. 260 maybe. Maybe even more than that. 
And then if you really want to get crazy, an Imperial Age potentially moves that even faster, moves it even higher, the gold per minute that you, you are going to be getting from that trade route. But now Salami, really starting to add in quite a few archers here. We can see that the walls are getting matched up. Lenok looking to try and put walls down on each side of Salami's walls, down to the south side, up to the north, looking to try and control all the choke points. But not going to be successful here, that villager. Trying to hide it, trying to hide it. Not going to have any luck there. <laughs> not today, my friend, not today. Unfortunately, uh, Lenok tries his best, but is unable to... Uh, He's unable to, to keep that villager alive, but we do have over on the uh, over on the east side a single spearman attacking down Palisade Gate, and a single archer comes out to respond to it. Definitely the right choice, not an overcommitment. And now we check in with Lenok and see how he's doing. At the moment, the villager count definitely in his favor, and the MIA going to be coming down here. So Lenok looking for that timing push. You know, we were talking about that window that lenok has got. That's what he wants. That's what he thinks he's got. And the question is going to be whether. Salami can hold it. Salami has an, a very aggressive window right now. You can see he's pumping out traders. So for anybody wondering, when it comes to gold a minute for traders like this, these traders at the moment, I, I think, are, are equivalent to about four villages on gold, each one. And he's got three markets. Now we're going to see trade bags coming through. 176 gold. Check this out. 176 gold. Boom. 247 gold coming through now. Now, he's actually sending the traders back uh, to the to the market. They don't need to. Uh, apparently, they will actually... Uh, even, even if they're out here right now, they'll still get 247. If we watch this guy, it says 146, but you see 247. Uh, so because of that, you don't actually have to send your traders back. Uh, they, they will get the, the refresh, but we'll, we'll switch it over now at the 12-minute mark so that we've got gold a minute coming through. Village are going to go down. Lenok reaching the castle age. And Salami looking to put on a bit of the heat. Now, it's very important playing up against the Ottomans. You need to, to, to have a timer ready. As soon as they age up, you've got to be counting down six mi or two minutes from that age up. But pushing up with the meta, Lenok not really paying attention right now. Villagers just going down on the wood line. Lenok falling asleep at the keyboard. Must Might be distracted by his girlfriend or something. The villain, oh, Lenok, wake up. What's going on, Lenok? He's literally losing all of the advantage that he had. Look at this. Salami just cleaning everything. And now he finally realizes... Lenok got distracted at the worst possible time. Lenok, how do you do that? That's a game-losing move right there. Huge damage. And now we go through and see what Salami's looking to do. Istanbul Imperial Palace. So instead of going for the Siege Landmark, he instead opts to go for the Imperial Palace. Which is a little bit curious, but it makes sense. There's a lot of important text that you want to get through the Vizier system as the Ottomans. And if you do take trade bags, it means that you're going to be missing out on something some somewhere else. So by getting Istanbul Imperial Palace, it enables you to get more technologies from the Vizier system. An extra two technologies and also increases the rate at which you get them. Now it looks like Salami going to be getting cleaned up and doing the right thing. Honestly, just draw your enemy to the back of their base. That way they're further away from your base, so you've got more time. You buy yourself more time. It's exactly what you want to be doing here. So where does Salami go from here? Because the gold... The gold is going to go get absolutely crazy. And we can see it's going to be a lot of barracks coming out for him. He's up to 2k gold a minute. And the trade numbers are starting to look really serious. He's just got traders coming out nonstop. 23 traders at the moment. He's, he's, more, he's 20, 25 economic units higher than his enemy. And I mean, I think that if Salami wins this game, there's going to be two big things that contribute to it. And the, the number one thing is going to be this raid. We saw 20... 20 this... How, how does Lee Nock, one of the best players in the world, lose 23 villages like that? I don't think that's ever happened before, where he's just literally... Th th there was nothing else going on. It was just like he was playing with the sound muted and had his minimap covered. And then was like, oh, oh, oh my, oh, my villagers on my woodline are dying. Damn, that sucks. But now behind this, we hear the next Vizier point come in. For Salami. Does he go into an ex extra military school? They're actually dropping down a siege workshop here. So you need to find a way to spend all of the gold that you're getting. And th there's a number of ways to do that as the Ottomans. But my personal favorite is through the Janissary. A lot of people don't like the Janissary. But me personally, I love it. And I think that when you're getting 250 gold a trader, 
there's some pretty good justification that you can afford a Janissary. So I'd, I'd love to see it. We see Lenok up towards the north. Could we potentially see a stone wall across here? I'd love to see a stone wall across here. It's a big section though. You know, sometimes when you're playing this map, you get really, really small sections uh, to wall off over, over on the, the specific sides. But, and it's going to be a stone wall that's coming through. A lot of villagers. Actually, that's not villagers. That's, uh, that's military units. Where are the villagers right now for Lenok? Or for, uh, for Salami? They were heading around the wrong way. And there's only three of them. He's going to need more than that. This could be bad for him. He's got nine men at arms. It's a decent number. Production on the backside. He's only got two more in queue. Three more in queue now. Meta is... At least he's got the meta, though. That could that could swing the difference. If, if he's got this on melee armor, he's got it on, I think, ranged at the moment. Needs to keep it on, on melee armor. Forces just chilling out for the moment. Sacred Sights. Not yet getting captured. Just instead going to be going for relics. Do we see any monastery enjoyers over on the north side of the map? It doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Not yet, at least. Now more stone walls coming up. Salami really looking to secure this game. If these stone walls get up, Salami almost certainly wins. 38 traders now for Salami. He's bought himself plenty of time. His enemy's on two town centers. Salami's just building that, that economic unit lead. Behind this, Lee Nock still sits on two town centers. And now looking to take sacred sites. He's also got the siege advantage. Don't forget that. The Manganels trickling out from the MIA. Going to enable him plenty of power in the mid game. First sacred site captured in the middle. Second sacred site about to be captured over on this east side. Third sacred site, very fortunately, by Salami has been walled out. No chance of a sacred site victory unless you take down those stone walls. But now Manganel's coming out as well for Salami. Look at the trade. Look at the trade coming in for Salami right now. This is starting to get a little bit ludicrous. Score at the moment is still slightly in favor of Salami, but nothing too crazy here. And what composition does he go for? As I mentioned before, I'd love to see Janissaries coming out from him. When you've got 3k gold a minute, you've got to be spending it on something. That's literally 34 Janissaries. 37 gold... Or 37 Janissaries a minute you could be making right now. But I suspect what's happening is Salami is probably spending a lot of his resources on market trading. If we take a look at the market, 182 gold for food, 202 for wood, and stone stock price. So a lot of his trading right now is just done, or a lot, a lot of the gold is just being spent on the market. But he neutralizes the site, neutralizes the, the neutralize? Yeah, neutral. Uh, it, you know that thing that you get where you don't know if the word that you're saying is the correct word? I just had that. Uh, he neutralizes that sacred site over on the east side. Pushes forward towards the single villager on the berries. Manganel in trouble. Good night, sweet prince. He goes down very quickly. Salami looking to move up for the next one. And Manganel on the defensive here as well. He's going to be able to hold this position. And it's crazy how much strength there are in walls. Speaking of walls up towards the north side, that stone wall did get up. Salami, no sign of an Imperial Age just yet. But for anybody unfamiliar... There's a great landmark that you can utilize as the Ottomans that's going to really buff up your trade and take it to the next level. But I guess my question is, when you've got 3,200 gold a minute, when you're sitting on 46 traders, do you really need your traders to be any more efficient than what they are? are? To me, it's just like it's a win more landmark. You're already winning. Well, let's win some more. But now the men at arms could be looking through. Fortunately, Lenok does react this time. I would have loved to have seen the outcome of this game had Lenok actually picked up this little raid here. But he didn't. And indeed, it's going to be the Seagate Castle coming in right now. Oh, this is big. Oh, this is really big. So this landmark, the large circle around it, is going to provide movement speed and armor to any traders in this influence. And that influence is going to linger for 10 seconds after they leave it. Which means that by just putting two landmarks down, or two uh, keeps down along that trade route, he should be able to cover the entire route with the, that Seagate Castle. I'll hover over it so you guys can see what it does. It acts as a keep and gives all existing keeps an aura that increases trade and trade ship movement speed by 40% and armor by 10%. 
And what's so great about this landmark is that it stacks with trade bags. So in Age of Empires 4, when you get an upgrade from your lumber camp and it does 15% and then another 15%, that that 15%, the second one, doesn't stack with the first one. It only stack it, it's only built on that base level. But here with that extra 40% movement speed, it's stacking on top of the 40% carry capacity. Because you're moving faster and you're carrying more. Alright, we gotta get a picture of it. You know what's happening right now. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful stuff right there from Salami. The Seagate Castle coming out. Do not be confused. This is not a Western Digital sponsored video. This is a Seagate sponsored video, my friends. Absolutely beautiful stuff. But now, looks like Lenok realizes it's time to begin putting on the pressure towards his enemy. Plenty of production coming up right now for Salami on this backside. I'm loving this opening from him. He's carrying well into the middle game. But the numbers here are looking pretty solid. They're by the same token for Lenok. Players sitting at about the same military or same population, but the military pop for Lenok significantly higher. Cinematic mode once again going to be coming out for you guys because it's time that these two do battle. And now the elite upgrade is going to be coming through. It looks like elite men at arms. Manganol on the backside going to be looking to try and dish out some damage, not hitting the back line. Really wants to hit this. They're so juicy, but the Springle manages to take it out. Double Manganel moving forward. And we can see Spearman heading through onto the back line, looking to try and take down those traders. He knows what's up. Lenox senses that there is... There is danger upon him. But fortunately, the keeps, the Seagate Castle, is going to be able to defend that position. And the elite men in arms are going to be able to do plenty of damage on this front line. Take a look at that. Elite Genissary also coming through. Salami looking to hold this on. He's managed to time it absolutely perfectly and pulls ahead on the score. Up 2k score right now. We'll check in on the back line and see, indeed, those spearmen have been completely cleaned up. I'd be surprised if a single unit went down on this backside. One of the things to remember is that with the Seagate Castle, what that does is it provides a buff, not only for movement speed, but also for armor. These uh, these units have 11 melee armor. 11 melee armor against Spearmen. Spearmen have got... I, I don't, how, many, how many? How much damage does Spearmen do right now? Probably... There we go. There's one. He does nine damage. So even a veteran Spearman is going to be doing what? 10 damage? And remember, Spearmen used to counter. You would think that they would still counter because it says cavalry here. They're not cavalry anymore. The developers removed that tag. Spearmen do not counter traders. They do not two-shot them the way that they used to. Back in the good old days, they were the good old days. Right now, you can see traders have 90 health. Back in the good old days, Spearmen, they, they, they used to get a bonus against them. So they do 29 damage. So you could, you could basically, what is that? Three-shotting them? Not anymore, though. That's not how it works. So the Janissary numbers really starting to build here. It's up to 26. And we do see some great bombards now beginning to come out for Salami. The Ottoman trade is real, and it can hurt you. University coming up for him. I love the fact he's got the keeps here on the backside. Protects the trade. And also offers this insane buff. I guess, realistically, thinking about it as a win more landmark, sure. But it's also a defensive landmark that protects your trade. Guarantees that throughout the late game, you're going to be okay. And look at the gold. Salami with access to gold in his base. Hasn't even taken 2,000 gold off his main gold mine. He's not interested. He doesn't need it. He's got trade. And siege crews now coming through. Genissary jumping inside the Great Bombard. He's going to begin sieging down those keeps. Speaking of sieging things down, double trebuchet on the north side of the base here for Salami. Going to be look looking to push the agenda. Do we have... Yes, we do. My question was, do we, do we have uh, roller shutter triggers through? And yes, we do. Oh, my lord, the damage right there. Almost, almost taking out that great bombard. But fortunately, the Genissary's on the front line. Going to be able to repair it up. Look at that, baby. Look at him go. Doing God's work right there. Springles getting a decent shot off. Roller shutter triggers coming through for Lenok as well. He will not forget. Needs to start pushing forward, though. You can see the pressure that's being put out here. Oh, almost gets the shots off. There we go. There we go. Mangadel shot into the middle. Huge damage coming in. Men at arms on the front line looking to tank it up. And the numbers here looking very solid at the moment for Salami. He's up about 20 population. But the real threat here is still that trade. Does this... Is it just me or does that... Has that... Has that... <laughs> that Bombard got no health? Jeez Louise, that guy came close to it. Fortunately, he lives on. Istanbul Observatory on the front line. 
If this goes down, does he lose the 60% bonus? I think he might. I think it just goes back to 40%. In which case, perhaps a little bit of a mistake to make this on the front lines. But I guess realistically, back in the base of Lee Nock, there's not a whole lot of space back here, is there? Lee Nock opened with two town centers. He started collecting relics. He put a lot of them away. But it didn't matter. Because trade is good. And not just good, but great. In fact, some would say, slept on a little bit. It is kind of crazy. Because now your traders are moving much faster. They're carrying more. And they're incredibly safe. How do you stop this? How do you stop this trade? This infinite gold coming through. Salami moving around the map. It's only a matter of time until there's no gold left for him. Sure, he's got at least 10,000 gold on his side of the map still. But that doesn't last forever. You know what does though? Trade. Currently sitting at 4.5k gold. That's a decent amount of gold. It's not, it's not a shabby amount of gold, that's for sure. All right. We're going to enter once again into the cinematic mode. The great Bombard's almost going down right there. We can see the spy going to come in. Janissary's going to wipe the floor with them. Needs to get some repairs out onto these great Bombards or at least position them in a way. God, they do so much damage. Two-shotting that military production building right there. Springhold's firing off. He takes a two, a one for one. Not terrible. Take, knocks out the Mangonel as well, but now it's going to be elite units on the front line up against the crossbows on the back that are yet to have their upgrades. You can see the way the Springholds are moving. They're hunting. They're looking. They're looming right now for those Bombards. But the Janissaries just crushing through the position of Lee Nock and now on the back line. Huge damage coming out from the Great Bombards. Taking out a, a massive amount. Did you guys see that? That was ludicrous damage that just came in. He took out like 10, 10 of the <laughs> 10 crossbows in one, one foul swoop. That was a lot of damage. And now the Great Bombards on the back side just going to continue cleaning up the rest of the production facilities here. Janissary is going to move forward. We'll bring back in the UI so you guys can start st start, start seeing the stats here. Janissary still yet to get their chemistry upgrade. Finally coming through now. That'll give him five extra damage for each one. Another Vizier point coming through for Salami. He's picked up so many Vizier points this game. Definitely going to be a big help for him. But now it looks like the Janissaries have come out from Leenok. So both players moving into mass gens. But remember... 4.2k gold a minute on the north side of the map against finite gold. I know what I'd prefer to be. I know who I'd rather be, that's for sure. It's not the guy with two TCs. All right. Let's have a look at the farms. Salami still, not a lot of villagers there. Middle of the map, Janissary is going to get caught out. Push definitely coming to shove at this, at this point in the game. And I love the fact that Janissaries are able to... Uh, <laughs> He just murdered a boar? Oh. He, you know what? He's, he's against the Ottomans. It's not a big deal. I was going to say, if he was against any other civilization, that could be... A, he'd be knocked out of a, a tournament for that. Not really. Not really. So where is, where is his economy right now? Because he's got a lot of villages up here on wood. Still yet to pick up his upgrades. Still yet to pick up the tier 2 food upgrade. Has multiple farms out here. It's just chilling for the moment. Not a whole lot of villagers on food, though. Like, it's it's a very small amount. I wonder how much trading is actually happening, because he's sitting on 6k gold. That's about a minute and a half's worth of gold. But how do you stop this? Because you can see he's also picked up court architects, which means that these walls are harder to get through now. They've got extra health. I think it's an extra 30% health. That's a lot of health. 4.5k health. Sprinkles moving up. A lot of Springlets coming out here for Lenok as well. Trying to get a decent trade off. Looks like he did hit the back line. And now the push is going to be coming through. He's doing a decent job of just pushing him away with smaller numbers. Siege, Siege crew is really going to help out. Now some scouts coming out for Salami. Excuse me, Salami? Why are you making scouts? Did you did you click the wrong button? Is that what we've got? Or are they looking to soak things up? But Springlets coming out. Decent little trade on the backside, but there's more Springlets to the north. Knight's going to be coming through as well. We enter into the cinematic mode once again to witness the battle as the medas on the back line are able to help out plenty. Providing that attack speed buff. The Springlords trade out one for one. And now it's going to be Bombards up against each other on the back line. More and more units rallying in. More Janissaries coming in. Villagers going to get pulled. Springlords able to tank out the Mangonel. 
Villagers getting absolutely eviscerated right there by the Great Bombards. Genissary is going to be able to cover their tracks as well. And indeed, the Villagers do go down with torches in hand. Rest in peace, little guys. And Salami continues pushing forward, grinding forward as the Great Bombard does fall for both sides. A single Bombard remains for Salami at this point. Behind the enemy lines, we hear what sounds to be a wolf working its magic somewhere. Somewhere on this map, there is a wolf. Just being annoying. There we go. Salami picking up the relics at 31 minutes. Just your classic relic timing right there. And he does begin to push in. Sitting with a casual 14k gold in the bank. 5k gold a minute. A total of 46 traders still. Huge damage coming in. Beautiful job by Salami. And now some imams moving out as well. Oh, oh, he's got the free imams. <laughs> he's, he's picked up the free imams, the healing from the imams. That's very, that's very cute at this stage of the game. I, I did not expect that. So he gets AoE healing here. So I'm assuming, no, he doesn't have herbal medicine. So for anybody wondering, herbal medicine doesn't affect the AoE healing of imams. Uh, and also the AoE healing of the imam doesn't stack. So if you've got one of them, it does the same amount of AoE healing that like 50 would do. And it's for that reason that I don't think it's it's super strong. I think it might work in a couple of like fast castle situations. But other than that, I think overall it's a pretty weak Vizier point. If it's stacked though, I guess that'd probably be too strong, wouldn't it? Imagine having like 20 Imams out that are all just healing one health per minute. Or one health per second rather. 20 health. Like how, how do you kill anything? Uh, maybe if Herbal Medicine affected them, they'd be a bit stronger. Well, obviously they would be stronger, but it'd be, you know, a bit more effective. Veteran Spahi, yet to receive their upgrades just yet. Springlord's able to tee off some decent shots. Salami maxing out 200 population. Genissary's moving forward. Knights on the back line looking to defend. Spahi giving him a little bit of a ring a run around right now. But all of the Springlord's just left undefended. Knights running in, get beautiful charges, but there are Genissaries here, but they're going to be blocking the Springlord's in. So even though they're able to take out the enemy Knights, the Springlord's are still going to die for it. He manages to take out about three out of that five. There's four of five. A single Springlord remains. That's not a good place to be. And now pushing forward, a keep going to be dropped down as well. 11,000 gold in the bank for Salami. And I think at this point in the game, there is no question as to the outcome. There is no question as to which way this goes. Salami is just overwhelming with economy, with military. And it starts to beg the question, how good is trade actually? Because Ottoman trade, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Fellas, I'm going to leave links in the description of where you can catch Salami. Good game gets cold. Salami is victorious. And he's looking solid, honestly. There is a reason why he's, he's top six on the ladder at the moment. He's playing very well. Fellas, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.